everyone, it's Judy. Welcome back to this week's On Track Podcast. We're happy to have you again. And yet again, we have another great guest who is Greg Wood of IHS Market. He's going to talk to you about a recent report that he created aggregating data from across the global supply chain and give you insights that you probably haven't seen in the news or on the internet about component shortages and what caused them and what to think about as you plan ahead for your designs and your business. So lean in, enjoy. I'll see you on the other side. Welcome to All Team's On Track Podcast, where we talk to leaders about PCB design, tackling subjects ranging from schematic capture all the way to the manufacturing floor. I'm your host, Judy Warner. Please listen in every week and subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, and all your favorite podcast apps. And be sure to check out the show notes at altium.com forward slash podcast, where you can find great resources and multiple ways to connect with us on social media. Well, hi, Greg. Welcome. So glad to have you today. And I understand I'm catching you just a few short days before you retire and go off into the sunset with your wife and your dog. So congratulations and thanks again for joining us. And thank you, Judy, for having me. I'm excited. Uh, We've got some great material um, for the podcast today, and I'm excited to be able to present that. Well, Greg, we met a little earlier, a few months ago, and as you know, uh, although our guests may not know, that we have a, uh, a part of IHS actually integrated into our pro-level tools. And so we have some of the power of IHS's supply chain um, aggregation of components uh, in our tool. And so you're a partner with Altium. But on that call, you were telling me about a report that you were assembling. And I had been really following closely the component shortage um, information and but you really got some insights into creating this report, so I wanted to talk about that. But before we dig into uh, your findings, give us a brief introduction about who you are and your background, and also a little bit more about IHS for those who may not know. Yeah, thanks, Judy. Uh, my name is Greg Wood, and I've been in the component information business for 25 years now with a variety of different companies. Um, I also have worked in manufacturing and software development uh, over the course of my career. And my current role at IHS Market is to be able to manage the uh, content for our um, huge electronic component database. And as far as IHS goes, um, IHS Market is a global information company. Um, Its ticker is INFO on the New York Stock Exchange. And uh, we're in, involved in many industries, including automotive, um, energy, financial, uh, engineering, and product design. And uh, the goal of IHS Market is to be able to provide business leaders with business critical information that will allow them the information and insight to stay ahead of their competition. Yeah, no small task in these days. And I know you address many markets, but I think that the information that and the reach you have globally um, as an aggregator is really, really interesting. And not, I think people who have installations of I just uh, for an electronics company understands the power of it. But I thought our listeners, some may who may not be you know, sort of knee deep in that water would want to know from a design engineer standpoint as well as a business point. So um, tell us a little bit about your most recent report that we talked about together and really what, um, from that information you gathered, well, let me back up a bit. Tell us where you gather this information is, and then we'll dive into the findings. So how do you aggregate this data, and what are you looking at in regards to component shortages? Yeah, thanks. So um, we have been looking at the uh, semiconductor shortages that have hit all the news media of late. And uh, what we have been doing is taking a look at component lead times over the period of the past year or so. And we get component lead times from leading um, authorized distributors 
and manufacturers on specific parts uh, that are in our database. And we get quite a bit of that information and we're able to aggregate that information and be able to provide um, a report of uh, lead times by IHS market part types. So for specific component parts. So how often do you prepare this sort of industry facing data? Uh, well, we receive the information daily from the distributors and manufacturers, and we prepare these reports on a monthly basis uh, to allow our customers to understand what the trends are from month to month. And I think you shared with me that you have um, some webinars that go over this kind of um, data that you gather. Can we put that link perhaps here in the show notes for our listeners? Absolutely. I would encourage it. Um, there's some good information on um, current trends. We've seen lead times increasing very significantly for specific part types in the semiconductor realm, uh, really since uh, December, January timeframe. Yeah, it's been a bit of a shock, at least to me. You know, a couple of years ago, we went through the, the uh, passive shortages uh, because I think mostly because of, um, the automotive industry and people sort of hoarding, but, you know, we got through that and then here we are to see semiconductors has kind of been a, a shock. So what are driving these, this current season of shortages and now dig in, if you would, Greg, into to what your findings were in, in this most recent report? Yeah, so what we've seen is um, the lead times for specific semiconductor part types increasing very significantly over the past three months, three to four months. And specifically for um, microcontrollers, microprocessors, uh, oscillators, we've seen some increases. Um, we've seen some very significant increases in um, memory, programmable logic. And then some of the discrete components uh, like transistors and diodes. And we've seen these increases uh, hmm. of additional 20 weeks of lead time accumulating very, very quickly over the past few months. So it's um, really created some very significant shortages in the industry that people really need to be prepared for. So can you share maybe some of the sort of stories you've seen as people have sort of had to adapt to these shortages and, and really sort of being up against the wall? Yeah, so um, the, the shortages really um, started um, during the um, COVID lockdowns where people were spending a lot of time at home and they were buying um, electronics for at-home use. So smartphones, TVs, game consoles those kinds of things to help them pass the time. And those are very high sales volume uh, type of products. And they really used up a lot of the um, semiconductor dyes that were available on the market and into the future. So that's what started the, um, uh, the shortages of these dyes really. And what happened over time was that um, the automotive industry rebounded much more than expected in the second half of 2020. And they found that um, a lot of the uh, microcontrollers were unavailable till well into the future as a result of these expanded lead times. So it's really created um, not only just for the automotive industry, um, but also for um, all industries really where they're manufacturing printed circuit boards and ele electronic equipment. Yeah, we've definitely, um, as you know, Altium uh, acquired Octopart some years ago, and the traffic to their website for searches has just gone through the roof. And so I think offerings like IHS and Octopart, you know, everybody's running <laughs> to find what they can on the on the bare shelves these days. So did the industry not anticipate like... I imagine when the consumer electronics were creating an uptick, was it because the unsure future, like why didn't they start making more dye? 
Well, I think uh, the capacity um, was already accounted for in future orders. So as people got from the Christmas holidays and as they got back from the Chinese New Year, they started to see demand increasing. So they put in uh, additional orders right away for uh, these components and they really used up capacity well into the future. It's because all those darn kids that were home driving everybody crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Throw them a screen in electronics. <laughs> well, there is. Um, not to mention the parents that were probably going bonkers as we all were forced into small quarters. Yes, indeed. Well, there is some good news in uh, the fact that the Semiconductor Industry Association had sent the uh, Biden administration a letter that really highlighted a national security um, concern that semiconductor manufacturing in North America has really reduced very significantly from um, 1990, where um, we produce 37% of semiconductor components to today, where we produce only 12% of semiconductor components. So as a result of that, the Biden administration has sent one of the world's largest fabrication facilities, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing, a letter encouraging them to reduce or to increase capacity. And as a result of that, um, the TSM decided to um, invest $100 billion in increased semiconductor fabrication capabilities. But um, that does take some time to put together all that uh, manufacturing capabilities. So um, although there is um, uh, a good sense of supply chain continuity in the future, it will take us some time to get to that point. Yeah, and I know many of us have been reading also, I know, I think Intel slated to build two uh, domestic plants here in the U.S., and um, and as part of that Biden um, bill that passed, I, I think it is called the Chip, CHIPS Act, um, where they're actually investing for innovation, right, and putting money into, you know, creating, you know, our resiliency, you know, here domestically. So um, are there other ways you're seeing, obviously, there, there's heavy investment going on, but you know, if I'm a if I'm a CEO of a you know c any kind of electronics company, or I'm a design engineer, what are some coping strategy to help you know keep our businesses afloat? And you know, what are you seeing as useful ways to sort of cope while we wait for these new plants to uh, either pick up capacity or come online? So those are great questions, and I would um, suggest that there's, um, if there's immediate concern about your supply chain, um, there's a few things that you can do to be able to um, sort of expand your opportunities to, um, to be able to acquire inventory. Um, a few ideas are to um, understand um, drop-in replacements very well. Um, so often there'll be a um, similar part number within the same family that can have um, reduced lead times and that can shorten your lead time by as much as 50% in some cases. Um, there is also um, opportunities to be able to look at um, inventory quantities for independent uh, distributors. Uh, so if there's um, trusted independent distributors that have inventory quantities, um, that would be a great area to be able to, be able to um, buy off some of their inventory uh, to keep your production lines in uh, running. Mm. Um, there's also um, opportunities for, um, there's been a lot of um, acquisition activity. Mm. So um, you can also look at independent distribution for um, uh, perhaps Fairchild parts that were uh, manufactured by Fairchild before they were acquired by um, uh, on semiconductor and be able to um, find 
uh, those components and be able to utilize those. And I've even heard of some companies looking at um, earlier date codes uh, than what they had normally been buying so that they can get um, uh, the, the parts they need that will go into their designs. You know, you had a shocking number about the automotive industry too, Greg, that what is this, we had this un, unexpected, un, really forecasted the, the depth at which the, um, or the height that the automotive or the EV market, the electrical vehicle market particularly would spike. And what's happening to the auto manufacturers right now? Well, the auto manufacturers have um, experienced uh, a lot of sh semiconductor shortages. And um, as a result of that, um, IHS market predicts that the automotive industry will lose $60 billion in sales in 2021 as a result of this. So there is some very significant impact. I've uh, seen numerous articles about uh, automotive companies uh, producing uh, or partially producing some of their cars um, until they get uh, these shortages filled. And they've even been um, stopping uh, production of the less popular uh, models that they're selling until we can get the supply chain issues resolved. It's just shocking. You know, I it, what what a uh, pandemic has done to our word, world is just, I think it's going to take us a bit to get our feet under us, but $60 billion is a massive impact. Um, you had mentioned something to me, kind of an anecdotal story about things getting desperate enough where instead of buying a relatively inexpensive part, people are buying a whole reference design. Yeah. What, are, what are things like that? You're seeing behavior, coping behaviors that are kind of odd right now. Yeah, that's, um, uh, I was very surprised. We work very closely with uh, component manufacturers. And one of the component manufacturers that I had been um, speaking with had told me of an occurrence where a particular company was looking for a $6 part. And it was just not available, no inventory, very long lead times. And what they did was they ended up buying $150 evaluation boards because there was this particular component on those boards. So they needed that to be able to continue their production. But you can imagine the cost increase for uh, the compromise that they had to do to be able to um, you know, come up with that order and be able to continue to manufacture their products. Wow, it's really something. Well, um... Any other advice for design engineers before I let you go? And I will definitely, for our listeners, I will definitely share links, links to the webinars, places you can go get more information. Um, but Greg, any final thoughts you might give? You, you've sort of covered all sides of the industry. Any other words of wisdom as we all cry for help out here? <laughs> Yeah, you know, I think for design engineers, um, some of the best things that you can do are uh, during part selection. So certainly you want to select parts um, that have cross-references um, across manufacturers if possible. Um, now, not all part types are going to have be exchangeable, but um, certainly um, to be able to do that and to be able to select parts with a long year's end of life that are some technologies. Those are some th things that are very helpful. Um, additionally, I think you can do a proactive review on your existing designs that you see uh, will have a continued life cycle in the, uh, the, the coming years and just take a, do a critical review on what your supplies look like into the future and um, what your mitigation strategy would be if you do run into um, critical shortages and also to, to really monitor what those lead times are on at least a weekly basis, if not uh, more often. Well, thank you. I, you know, I, I really am excited to have you on and I know this has been helpful and I'm sure the links that I'll share, obviously, of course, for our industry, IHS has a solution product. It, it's probably not for smaller companies, but it's a 
an amazing product. I will definitely link to their product page. And at Altium, you can also plug in to Octopart. And we just got to swim through this one together. So Greg, thank you so much for joining just days before your retirement. Thank you for all you've done for the industry. I know you've devoted a lot of your life to making things better for us out here. So thank you so much and want to wish you the best on your happy retirement. Well, thank you so much, Judy. I really appreciate the opportunity to be able to um, uh, be on this podcast and um, uh, wish everyone the best. Thank you so much to our audience. Thanks so much for listening today. We look forward to being with you next time. Remember, go check out the show notes, check out the great resources, both on the IHS uh, website and I'll share some others. So hope this was helpful. We'll see you next week. Until then, remember to stay healthy, stay safe, and always remember to stay on track. Mm -hmm.